Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial from Blentus.com. I'm Oliver and in this series I'll show you how to create this Valentine's chocolates scene. It will be divided in three parts. In the first part we'll talk about the modeling of the chocolates. In the second part we'll go through physics simulations. So we end up with a nice pile of chocolates. And during the third one I'll show you how to shade and render the final scene. If you're watching this after Valentine's Day, you'll still learn a lot of tips and tricks I will share with you in this tutorial series. And well, you can always say the result to surprise your loved one next year, right? So come on, let's get a 3D chocolate overdosed already. Alright, so we have to start with the modeling. And first I, I will clean this, uh, this mesh here, I don't need this sphere, you may have a cube, whatever. Just delete it. Alright, and we are going to start with a plane. For that I'm going to press 7 in the numpad and I'm going to press shift A and uh, mesh plane. You can also add it from the create tab here in the tools region and click plane or you can add it from here from the header of the 3D view. Go to mesh and plane. All right now we computer people are lazy and <laughs> we, we like computers because they can do things for us. Um, so I only want to model half of the heart. The other half will be generated by Blender. So what I need to do now is cut half of the plane so I can generate it with a, a mirror modifier. So let's press tab to enter into the, into the edit mode or you can alternatively go here to the header and click on the object mode menu and click on edit mode. There we go. Now I need to create a cut right in the middle, exactly in the middle. So what I will do is to press Control R to access the um, loop cut and slide tool and now if we get close to an edge it will preview with a pink line the cut that it's going to make so let's press left mouse button to accept and now we can slide it we don't want to slide it we want to leave it right in the middle and the way we do that is by canceling this movement we can cancel it with right mouse button or with esc for example press escape on the keyboard and this cut is left right in the middle. Now I will select these two vertices and delete them with X, select vertices and now I'm left only with half the plane. But the pivot point of the plane is still here in the middle. So now I can generate this other part of the plane by using a mirror modifier. So let's go here to the properties editor, let's click on the modifiers tab, the one with the wrench on it and on add modifier, let's add a subdivision, uh, sorry, not a subdivision surface, a mirror modifier. Subdivision surface we will add later. All right, so now half of the plane is generated by this uh, modifier. Now let me tell you one more thing that we are going to do, and is that right now, the, these vertices that are in the, in the middle are free, okay? We can move them around. We don't want that to happen. The ones that are here in the mirror plane, we want them to be clipped. So the one thing we can do is to go here to the mirror modifier options and click on clipping, enable clipping. So now these will be able to move up and down, well on the Y axis, but we can't separate it from the mirror plane. All right, so that's uh, cool. So we make sure that we are not going to have holes or anything in the mirror uh, center. Okay, so now we can start with the modeling. So I will press A to select everything and I'm going to move it down and scale it down as well. And uh, the reason why I do this is that I want this uh, pivot point of the object to be in the middle of the heart and I'm going to start modeling by the bottom. All right, so what I will do is now extrude this so I can just draw the shape of the heart around. So I'm going to select these two vertices. I going to move them like this and this as you can already kind of uh, see is the bottom of the heart the one that has a corner all right okay now I can select this edge here and I could of course go and press E to extrude just uh, leave it there I can rotate it extrude it again rotate it extrude it again rotate it and so on however I'm going to do something which uh, will be a lot faster, which is pressing Control click And Control click what it will do is that, as you can see, it will automatically rotate the previous edge so it makes a nice curve. This is pretty cool. So I, I'm going to start just going like this and just making the basic shape of the heart. All right, now this 
vertex is here. If we press Control Tab to switch between the edge and vertex mode, you can also just click here on the header to switch between both of the modes. Um, you can see that these vertices are not in the mirror plane, and that's the only reason why they are allowed to be on the other side, okay? So what I need to do is just drag them with right mouse button and place them on the mirror plane, and they will be clipped there, and I won't be able to move them anymore from the mirror plane. All right. Okay, so we kind of have this uh, outside selection, okay. So we have the outer shape of our heart. Now we need to fill the center, all right? We need to fill this part in the center. We don't want a hole, we want a full chocolate, <laughs> all right? Not a donut, we want uh, the, the whole thing. So um, for explaining to you how that works, I'm going to show you here um, a very basic, uh, let me just uh, look for this. All right, here I am. And so here I will draw a little and we'll do a quick explanation on something, a little trick that you have to keep in mind when you're going to fill holes. Because uh, filling holes is something that a lot of people find a little tricky and I'm going to explain uh, something that will probably help you a lot. I hope it helps you. So we have a plane. I'm going to start by a square, right, which is the basic shape. And uh, here's the thing. We need to have the same number of uh, vertices here than here. And we need to have the same number of vertices here and here. This is for starters, okay? So if I find myself with this setup, okay, What I need to do is uh, basically, you know, we have, we count the vertices, okay? So we know that these are the corners and we know that we have here in the bottom, we only have one vertex, but at the top we have two vertices. So I need to have the same number of vertices to be able to fill it correctly. So I would have to add a, uh, a new vertex here so I can easily just connect them, okay? And then, here on the on the sides we have just one so it's uh, okay we can fill it very easily all right we could of course just uh, create a new loop cut if we want it to be nice or whatever but uh, if we find ourselves in the same situation and uh, we find ourselves you know we start just filling this and so now oh this I can't continue here because I have no vertices well we would have to use like uh, alternative things like doing something like this and uh, fill it in weird ways and, and it can be done of course there are techniques for that okay but I want to keep it simple so what we are going to do is to basically just create vertices to be able to join them perfectly now of course this is a plane but uh, our shape is not a plane our shape is heart like okay so this is a slightly more complex but only visually only until we define what the corners are where the corners are. So if we have, let's say, I'm, I'm going to do it randomly, okay? So uh, you can see that this, I'm not making this up. <laughs> All right, so I, I would have this number of vertices, so I would need to define where the corners of the plane would be in this heart shape. So we know uh, what the, vertic the, the vertical, um, uh, you know, the top vertices would be, the bottom vertices and the side vertices, okay? So basically, I would go with this. This would be a corner, and this other one would be a corner. So I only have one here on the side. Luckily, in this case, we only have one side uh, vertically. I mean, only one vertex. And this other side is empty because we are mirroring it. So we only need one division like this. Okay, so we already have it horizontally. Now let's see vertically. Uh, luckily, in this case, we have the same number of vertices. So we have this. And I, I swear, I didn't... I didn't uh, made this to be a coincidence, but uh, it, it has been. So we could fill this uh, very, very quickly. However, in the case of our heart, we may find ourselves that we have more vertices here at the top than at the bottom. So it's very simple. In this case, we just add another vertices, vertex here and just connect them. All right, so now we know this, let's uh, jump back into Blender and let's start making this simple. So we know that this will be the corners, okay? And so we find ourselves with two vertices here, two vertices, but here at the top we only have one. 
So I'm going to add a new cut here with Control R and just move it with G, okay, and just just uh, remodel this a little bit, arrange this so this fits nicely and it's even, it's all even and clean. Okay, cool. Good. So now you have two vertices here, two vertices here, and one vertex here. These two here will be the corners. So how we, we how do we go about this? Well, first we select these two ones, for example, and press F to fill them with a face. Then we go with the next ones, fill them with another face. And now we are left with the corners and this other vertex here. So uh, what we can do here is, uh, in this case, it's very simple. We can just press Control R and make a cut here in the middle. Because now, here what we have is just a hole and we have one vertex in one of the sides and in the other side we have none. So I just create a cut with Control R, press right mouse button to leave it in the middle and I, I will just go and adjust this so it's not spiky. And uh, now I have exactly the same number of vertices. I have four here and I have four here. And this is pretty cool. I just fill them with F and I'm left with all these filled. Cool. All right, so now let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, keep modeling. We need to add some thickness to this heart. So let's press A to select everything. And uh, let's actually go to the face mode, okay? Control tab and uh, with control tab you can switch. Remember that. All right, let's press E to extrude and just give it a thickness. I think uh, this would be fine. And now is the moment in which we already have our basic shape and we need to start refining it. So I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to uh, smooth this shape out and start adding details. So let's go to the add modifier button here and let's click on subdivision surface. As a quick trick, alternatively, we don't need to go to this uh, uh, menu at all. We just can, can press control and one of the numbers and it will add a, a subdivision surface modifier with the level of subdivision that we mark in our number. So if we press, for example, control one, it will just add a subdivision surface modifier in level one. And if we press control two, it will just switch to level two. So it's very interesting to know this shortcut because with control one and two, or three even, we can just uh, be in the edit mode and don't need to go at the modifiers panel at all in order to switch between different levels of subdivision and preview. If we press control zero, we just go to the basic model. All right, so let's uh, just uh, stick with two subdivisions, okay? You can also change it here. Now, keep in mind that the subdivisions in the viewport, in the 3D viewport while you're working, and the subdivisions in the render are not the same, okay? So this trick only affects to the viewport, all right? If you want uh, three subdivisions to apply during render time, you have to do it here on the render part, okay? But with two, we should do. All right, so now we have to do several things here. I'm going to start defining this, and uh, I'm going to press Control R and add a loop cut here. All right, and I'm going to press um, Control Tab and switch to the Edge mode, okay. And now I'm going to, with this loop selected, and remember that you can select a loop of uh, edges, right, an edge loop, <laughs> that's the actual name. You can select edge loops by pressing Alt and right mouse button in an edge. Okay, so just by selecting this, press Control B, and with this you will bevel. And uh, with this bevel, we basically will end up with several, uh, with two edge loops instead of one, which is exactly what I want. Now, I will add another one. Okay, you, you can actually go farther, okay, and press Control B. All right, do this. And if you scroll with the mouse wheel, you can define more divisions. Right now, for this case, I need three. So just left mouse button to, to accept it. And now I will select this loop here with Alt right mouse button, press Shift and hold it to select another loop, okay? And um, with this, okay, keep in mind that here I, I, I pressed Shift and Alt and holding both uh, buttons, I just uh, right click. This is the way of selecting different uh, edge loops. All right, so selecting the both of these, 
I'm going to press G and C to move in the C axis and I hold shift to move with uh, more precision so I can do this kind of shape. All right, this will start to find the shape of our chocolate. Good, now I'm going to select these faces here in the, in the top, okay, inside these details and just press E to extrude and this will create some detail like this. All right, and bring it approximately to the height of this edge loops that we moved up before. All right, now I want to make a division here and define the side, okay? So let's press Control R and divide this. Just bring it up a little, okay, something like this. And now I need to select this phase loop. So let's press Alt, right click, and uh, this also works with faces, yes, and with vertices. So we can select this face loop that goes around the side. Okay, so what I do now is to press E to extrude, but instead of moving it, I'm going to just leave it there with right mouse button or escape. And um, you have to make sure that you don't have this option here, the auto merge option enabled, because if you have it, the vertices that are the stay in the, in the same place as other vertices will be automatically welded and we don't want that, okay? We just want to cancel the movement, but we want to be able to uh, to do it manually now. So with the same selection in, uh, in place, we just press Alt-S, and Alt-S will basically extrude this in the, fa in, in the direction that the faces are looking to. So we just extrude it a little like this, okay? And now just go to the Edge Selection Mode with Control tab select the loop here with alt and right and the uh, right mouse button and press um, actually what we can do here is we can do something slightly different we can just uh, scale from the 3d cursor pivot point so we're going here and select the 3d cursor as a pivot point and now scale so you can see how we scale from the pivot point right you can uh, replace you can place again the pivot point with left mouse button, okay? Um, but right now I think it's already okay. I can maybe arrange it a little, but I think this is basically okay. Yeah, maybe we can move this vertex here. I'm going to, to start working from the normal pivot again. So just go here and press some bounding box or medium point, or you can, for switching between the 3D cursor and the medium point, or, or the bounding box, I don't remember, uh, you press comma or dot. Okay, it's for the bounding box center. There we go. So with comma and dot in the keyboard, you can switch between both pivot points. Very, uh, very useful for rotations and scales. Okay, so let's put that there. Let's bring this other one too, a little uh, outwards, okay. We can move this a little bit. And uh, here's another trick. Right now, I need to move this on the X and the Y axis. However, I want to be able to move in those both axes at the same time. I could do it from the top view if I press 7 in the numpad. Okay, so I can do something like this. Okay, to arrange the shape a little. And this is good. But I may want to do it from the 3D view, from the perspective view. So the way I do it is I press, I hold, sh hold shift sorry, and I left mouse button over the C axis on this, uh, on this gizmo, and this will let us, this will block the C axis and let us move in the X and Y axis at the same time. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so this is done here, and I think I will just move this down a little, and this is almost done. Okay, now there is only one more step I need to do and is define this, uh, this, this corners, these edges here. So I will, with Alt and right mouse button, I will select this loop. Now press uh, Shift, hold Shift, Alt, right mouse button and select these loops. And now press uh, C in the keyboard to access to the wireframe mode because I need to see this uh, wireframe here and select this other loop too. And now I will just bevel them. With Control B, I bevel. And so as we add geometry there, you can see how the, the corners are much more defined. Pretty good. Something like that. All right, so we are almost there. We only need 
one thing. Here, as we look from, from the top, we need first to arrange this part. So I'm going to press C so I can uh, see the wireframe and access all the vertices, even if they are under the mesh. And hold control, left mouse button, drag, and this will add a lasso selection. Uh, we can also do a box selection by pressing B on the keyboard and just drag in. This will select everything into it. And I will just move them down. Okay, I can press C now again to see the mesh exactly. And uh, yes, I think this is exactly what I want. All right, so now the thing that is uh, that I'm missing is that these are curves. Okay, we can see these curves here, but I want them to look like a corner, right? It's a normal heart. Well, it's not, not human heart, but there is a chocolate heart, a beautiful one. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is to basically add a loop cut here. So press Control R and uh, just drag it. And you can see how as we get closer to the other edge, the corner is much more defined. This is because the subdivision surface smooths the shape between different edges. And so the closer the edges are, the more defined the corner is, right? So just put it right there. Okay, this is much, much better. Good. Now we can see the faces, all right? Uh, this edges here and that is not cool. What I need to do is to go here to the tools tab and uh, let's click on shading smooth. This is uh, from the object mode. Okay, I press tab to go out of the edit mode and I'm doing this. But now I'm looking here at another thing and is that here in the middle of this heart we can see this line and also here at this uh, high parts uh, we see these parts here, this edge. I don't want that edge to be visible. That is happening because these two vertices are very close to each other. But if I select these vertices, vertices here, and I select also these ones, uh, not this one, but this one in the middle, and also here, these ones, okay. I can slide them by pressing G twice. G is to grab, but if I press it again, it will let me slide those vertices along the edge to which they belong. So let's just move them right about there and left mouse button to accept. Maybe these ones are too much. So just move them like this, okay. What we achieve with this is that we need this proximity here in the corners because we want this to look like a corner. But we don't want that proximity here at the top because we want this to look smoother, all right? So the way we achieve that is by uh, taking these um, uh, vertices farther away from each other. And so now we have a much smoother shape. All right, this is pretty good. So the model is done. In the next part, we're going to see how to duplicate this a lot of times and do a physics simulation, a basic physics, a basic uh, physics simulation to um, make a, a bunch of chocolates uh, stuck together. And here, just uh, just a little detail, I can probably just add a loop cut here, okay, and just, just to add some extra detail. Not really needed, but I just felt like doing it, so it's all much more even. All right, so uh, this is it for the model. Now, we can, of course, just uh, tweak it a little. You know, we can go here and, um, you know, maybe uh, in, in, the, in the wireframe mode, we can uh, make it much, much more easily, all right? Because we can select all the vertices, regardless if they are hidden or not by the mesh. And uh, here, for example, I can just enable here the proportional editing tool, just enable them, enable it. And we can add with control and drag in with the left mouse button, we can select all these uh, vertices and maybe move them. And with the scroll wheel in the mouse, I can, you can see how I can change the shape uh, proportionally, all right? And this is exactly what I want. I can bring it up a little, or I can just select a few vertices here and move them down to change the shape of the heart. This is, uh, of course, to your election, all right? Depending on the shape of the heart you want. But I just wanted to show you that this is possible. And maybe, you know, here I can actually see this polygon, so I may go with three subdivisions. However, I think I will leave it on two 
because later we will have a lot of hearts and that will add a lot of geometry to the scene. So I prefer to have a, a lower geometry and then in the render, uh, if we feel like needing it, needing more the more resolution, we just can add it, okay? All right, so uh, the, the, our heart is done already. Let's go for the next part for the physics simulation.